Awesome. All right, I'm going to uh, shut up. So are you guys, because this guy's here. Uh, this is Neek. I actually have no idea what story he's going to tell today, because it's a personal story. And we've talked a bit about business before. That's right. I've not heard this. But what I do know is he wrote a book about two years ago now. That's right, yeah. Called I'll touch upon that. Oh, so I am going to blow your story. If I tell a little bit. All right. But I'm it's not, okay. So he wrote a book. I'm not going to tell you what it was called. That's his job. That's really irritating, all that music. I'll uh, talk I'm, over it. I'm going to ask you to do one thing. It's a small thing, and I'm sure you can do it. You guys know what it's coming. You were here for the last one. He's a bit nervous. It's hard being up here on stage with all of these people. So I want you to give him a huge round of applause. I want clapping. I want cheering. I want whistling. Give him the energy. Be part of and his I'll, story. I'll get out of this. Yeah. And what I want is all those people sitting over there to look over and go, what's going on? What, what am I missing? Can you do that for us? All right, ladies and gentlemen, a huge, huge campus party welcome to Nick Kazmakers. Thank you so much, Nick. That is a great uh, introduction. And I'm uh, very uh, welcome uh, to, to be here and to be invited to talk about, uh, to about my personal story, about that, because that's what I'm going to do. Uh, tell you a story about why I became entrepreneur, why I am an entrepreneur, and what I'm doing as an entrepreneur, uh, but also where it all started. And actually, to be honest, it all started here. Who is from the Netherlands, actually? Who, who knows this, this village? That's great. It's in the south of the Netherlands. You've ever been there? Yeah. You actually? Okay, where do you live? Eindhoven. Eindhoven. That's great. Veldhoven. That's wonderful. So I grew up in Eersel. It's a little village in the south of the Netherlands. Actually, there's not much going on there, but I had a wonderful childhood. And after a while, after my youth, I started s going studying in Eindhoven at the Technical University. Um, I'm I don't really know why I actually choose the Technical University, but it was close by in uh, in Eersel, and uh, I thought, well, all the smart kids go to to the Technical University, so I thought, well, I have to be there as well, probably. Um, I had a great time, but in a while, it started buzzing around me, and I thought, this is not all there is in the world. So I wanted to look further than Eindhoven and the south of the Netherlands. So I took part in an exchange period. Who recognizes this view? Nobody? San Francisco? Oak no, this is Istanbul. So uh, I went to Istanbul uh, for half a year. I uh, Actually, this is exactly the view I had when I was uh, sitting in the classroom over there, uh, looking to the teacher, talking about all interesting stuff. You can imagine that I was constantly looking at this beautiful view. So I had a wonderful time over there, um, learned a lot. But in the end, I thought, well, I have to graduate. So here it's me with my tie, with my scarf and uh, very proud champagne because I graduated. So that's what you have to do being a student, graduate, make your parents proud. So that's what I did. Um, during my studies, I did a lot of different things. Also, I started a small company, but it's, if I look back, it was a little bit too to uh, to play around, you know, to learn a, lit, but, uh, a little bit. But at the end, uh, I thought, um, I'm not ready for entrepreneurship yet. So I started to, uh, to take interviews, and I ended up at a very interesting company. Oh, oh this. A uh, very interesting company, and this is actually uh, the house where I walked to for the first interview. And uh, it's a Kirkman company, and I, I attended a, a traineeship because it was really broad. I could learn a lot. And uh, actually, I was looking for this life, the corporate life, because I wanted to be a corporate consultant, uh, being in large uh, towers, uh, talking to boardrooms, uh, advising them, making a lot of PowerPoint presentations. And actually, I did pretty well. I had my nice car over here, a polo. I was really uh, fond of that. I had my salary check every month, and ah, it was okay. Uh, if I compare to my uh, my uh, my friends, I did I did well. And every day, going to work, 
like this and uh, I thought yeah I'm doing I'm doing good and I did well but still it wasn't good enough I wanted more I wanted more attention I wanted to to be really something so a guy a friend of me told me that there was a TV show coming up a TV show in the Netherlands and they were looking for the perfect the top manager Maybe you've heard of the, the Donald Trump's version uh, of, uh, you know, uh, top managers wanted. And actually, I attended. And in the end, I was really proud, more nervous than I am now, but on the screen, attending top managers. Who has seen the show in the Netherlands? You liked it? Do you recognize me from that time or not, not at all? Yeah, I understand. So I was there, so I was doing well, so I had a good career. Uh, I was on TV and uh, I didn't win that. Uh, that's a pity, but I was all around. So I did well, right? I felt terrible, really. I was constantly comparing myself to others. What, to do, uh, what are they doing? What can they do? How much do they earn? Oh, they have a nice job. But I was constantly seeking for uh, the next thing and I was jumping around and I wasn't happy at all because what I wanted was some peace, some like the confidence that the choices that I made that uh, had a positive, uh, positive outcome in the future. But I couldn't predict the future and I, I wanted some to lead my own life instead of that others uh, influence me in what I did. And at that time I saw uh, a short movie and I'm going to, to uh, share with you, but I need some sound. I'm going to share with you and it um, s still keeps gives me the shivers because uh, it had a lot of impact for me because that was the moment that changed my, uh, my professional life at least. What makes you itch? What sort of a situation would you like? Let's suppose I do this often in vocational guidance of students. They come to me and say, well, uh, we're getting out of college and we have the faintest idea what we want to do. So I always ask the question, what would you like to do if money were no object? What, how would you really enjoy spending your life? Well, it's so amazing as a result of our kind of educational system, crowds of students say, well, we'd like to be painters, we'd like to be poets, we'd like to be writers, but as everybody knows, you can't earn any money that way. Or another person says, well, I'd like to live an out-of-doors life and ride horses. I say, do you want to teach in a riding school? Uh, let's go through with it. What do you want to do? When we finally got down to something which the individual says he really wants to do, I will say to him, you do that and uh, forget the money. Uh, because if you say that getting the money is the most important thing, you will spend your life completely wasting your time. You'll be doing things you don't like doing in order to go on living, that is to go on doing things you don't like doing, which is stupid better to have a short life that is full of what you like doing than a long life spent in a miserable way. And after all, if you do really like what you're doing, it doesn't matter what it is, you can eventually turn it, uh, you could eventually become a master of it. The only way to become a master of something is to be really with it. And then you'll be able to get a good fee for whatever it is. So uh, don't, don't worry too much, uh, that's, uh, everybody's, uh, somebody's interested in everything. And anything you can be interested in, you'll find others will. But it's absolutely stupid to spend your time doing things you don't like in order to go on spending things you don't like and doing things you don't like and to teach your children to follow in the same track. See, what we're doing is we're bringing up children and educating them to live the same sort of lives we're living in order that the, they may justify themselves and find satisfaction in life by bringing up their children, to bring up their children, to 
to do the same thing, so it's all wretch and no vomit. It never gets there. And so, therefore, it's so important to consider this question, what do I desire? sound guy is Did looking it? look this one's probably working take this for a moment leave that one on okay so i was really thinking okay what do i desire i don't like to compare myself to to others and um the entrepreneur in me said to me okay, no, okay i have so to take action myself get no feedback, right? this is not going well right or you guys yeah somebody's stolen the frequency that your headset's using that's that's a pity yeah but also this one is not really all right we'll take this one because this one seems to be good okay there i go so i thought okay i have to do something about it so what i did you already see it i started interviewing 30 uh, no top people that. in the environment i was working they were all ceos of big companies um at that time uh, our uh, former minister of uh, economic affairs was at that time uh, uh, CEO of Axel Nobel, um, uh, at Heimans, Dick Boer, from Aal, so all the big guys. I did this together with a colleague. Just simple with the question, okay, probably you're doing something you really like, otherwise you won't be doing it for 80 or more hours a week. And also, you're really successful. And I wanted to figure out, with the ambitions I had, okay, how can I do something that I like and also be successful? So I thought... Well, maybe they teach me how to become CEO because I thought that that's important because I want to be successful. I was still in a change of period. But in the end, um, it was not about how to become a CEO, but it was more about how to create your own story in life, how to create the story you're proud of and where you're a grandfather. You can tell your, your grandchildren, okay, um, I'm proud of myself because I made something out of it. So that's written down in, this, in, in the book. No goods, no story. And actually, it's based uh, on one formula. And you've seen I'm from the technical university, so that comes in handy when I'm using formulas. But it's all about, and it's, it's a formula in Dutch, but it's personal leadership is guts, durven, times uh, willen plus kunnen, wanting plus uh, talent. Uh, Times uh, passion, gunnen. It's a kind of, uh, no, um, favoring. So I will not go in detail about this formula, but I want to share some basic insights that I had uh, during those interviews. And basic insights about myself in, okay, I have to do something. I have to figure out what I really want. So first of all, I learned from all those CEOs that are all on the top uh, doing politics and being successful that they had to focus on the present and not constantly thinking of what can I do in the future and what can I achieve in the future because what you're doing in the future is a result of what you're doing now. If you do the things you like right now, if you do the things you're successful at right now where your talent is, then a great future can be a result, not the opposite. It might be something that, yeah, the, Everybody knows this, but for me it was a, a total, complete new insight and I really felt it, especially after talking to 30 people that really inspired me and I looked up to. Second, well, it was central in the story I've been telling now, is was I was constantly comparing myself to others that were, I thought, more successful, more happy than I was. So I realized, okay, stop doing that and look at yourself. What do you want? What do you, uh, what, what are you really good at? Third, I was looking for the, the next step and I realized that there's no wrong career choice. And that was also based because all the CEOs we had been talking to, they said, don't uh, push yourself because do you really think that we knew what the, the path would be all the way up to here or all the way up to success. 
So when we were interviewing them, they had a great story, yeah, then I did this, and then I made the step to the next step, uh, and so on. But in the end, at Moment Supreme, a uh, while back, they didn't realize. So I could realize that wrong career choices don't exist, so whatever. And the final part, and that that's something that is really uh, something everybody should know, things will be fine. Everything will be fine. And, well, what do you mean with that? Well, for instance, I had a life up to there. I was 25, 26. I don't remember correctly, but something around that. And all the things I had been doing until then, I was okay with it. I didn't regret anything. So I was thinking about a next career step. So why would I even think that I would make the wrong career step? So there is uh, no any, um, uh, yeah, I didn't have the experience that I did before. So it gave me a lot of, uh, uh, the pressure went away and I thought, okay, screw it, let's do it. And in the end, for me, it was a step to entrepreneurship, the step of throwing the car away, no, well, not throwing it away, giving the car away back, not going to uh, work every day in a suit, but also not having the salary check and trying to find my own path. And for me, then I started the company Aim for the Moon. Anybody ever heard of Aim for the Moon? Yeah. Um, so, and Aim for the Moon, I had a passion, and my passion at that time was I wanted to work together with all sorts of people that had the same uh, energy that I had, that had the same ambitions, and that was to have some impact on the world and uh, to create stuff instead of advice and analyze. So I re realized that I really wanted to do that. So the first thing I wanted to do is to find people around me that uh, were the same like me. And then, well, let's think about what we're going to do then. So, and actually the first thing I did together with my co-founder, Jesse van der Meulen, was um, doing something with what we are going to see right here. First, let me show. Can I? Uh, oh, no. Gotta love how technology is here to help us. This is the most manic depressive way you could possibly live life, right? You're never having a good day. You're either having the best day ever or you think you're about to die. I made uh, 30 million dollars when I was 17. I lost it by the time I was 20. I think we were so obsessed with what it would do for us that we didn't necessarily see the full potential of how big of an impact we could actually have. Everything you're doing is basically something you're just barely qualified for or not qualified for. And it's like jumping off a cliff and having to build your own parachute. I remember writing letters to my friends and family saying, I'm sorry you don't know me anymore, that sort of thing. Because I just like, I sort of let all of my relationships go because nothing was as important as this. Best entrepreneurs are often either solving their own problems or solving some huge thing, and they can really change the world. Entrepreneurship at the moment is kind of like the new smoking. It's cool to be creative, it's cool to be making something. I don't know why anybody thinks that like startups are all, you know, rainbows and sunshine. We actually built our own desks from like wood that was lying around in the courtyard. You know, as a 19 year old sitting down looking at that many zeros, you're freaking out. This is the most amazing thing you've ever seen in your life. Anybody now with a laptop and a Wi Fi connection can build anything. Uh, I've met kids out here who are, you know, still teenagers and starting companies, all the way down to 16 years old, um, which is pretty, pretty crazy when you think about it. When I was working on my first company, when I was 13, I had at least a few hundred customers. I don't remember exactly what the count was, but I think we had something like 30 people before we had our first person above 30. Follow your heart. Follow the thing that really matters to you. If you do that, you will be, become a big success. Being successful as a young company, there is no feeling like it in the whole world. All these people that, you know, are on magazine covers, they started out just like you. I remember 
it was like a big shock when we got our first employee and we had to like start like wearing clothes to work and having normal business hours. Get your ass off YouTube or Vimeo, stop watching this video and get out there and do it. So we saw this, Yes and I, we saw this documentary, actually not this documentary, we actually saw this trailer online and we thought, wow, this is cool. We want to see it. And we uh, thought, well, let's download it. Okay, we are not supposed to, but we thought, well, the easiest way to, to get it is to, to get it online somewhere. But actually, we found out it wasn't possible to see the documentary because it was just published by two uh, girls from Iceland, and they had a great campaign, and they just published it. And they, they told us, uh, you can see it, but you have to host an event in the Netherlands and then you can get the rights, exclusive rights, and you, uh, you can earn it back. But you have to pay uh, to get the rights. So we thought, well, are we going to do it? And we thought, well, if we like it this much, and we wanted to see it, what those uh, startup founders are t telling about how they, how they uh, do th stuff, then probably others will too. So we thought, let's buy the rights and host an event. And before we knew, and this is four years ago, before we knew, we put an, uh, a Facebook event online and uh, with showing this trailer and the same day, uh, 200 tickets were sold out because everybody wanted to see it. So we thought, okay, probably we have something here. Well, long story short, we went with this documentary through the entire, uh, through Netherlands uh, to uh, Amsterdam three times, Rotterdam, Utrecht, uh, Tilburg, everywhere to get all sorts of entrepreneurs like us together and sharing the story of, okay, let's create stuff together. So in the end, and you've seen this uh, picture a couple of times already, but we created a group of young entrepreneurs who all thought, okay, we have to do something, we have to create stuff. But we realized that um, it's quite hard to be successful as a young entrepreneur. Uh, yeah, with a web uh, laptop and a Wi-Fi connection, you can create everything, but there's hyper uh, competition and it's, it's not that easy. Um, so we thought, okay, what can we do to make it more easy for ourselves? So first of all, um, what we wanted, we wanted to create ventures, but in a different way. And we thought, okay, if it's so difficult for us as young entrepreneurs to, to, to scale something and to be really successful, what we were good at was to, to start stuff to start IDs and uh, to get our first customers, but really to skill something and to have an impact in the market, that was quite difficult. So we thought, why not connecting ourselves to the entities or the people or whatever uh, that can help us skill? And for us, uh, we realized in doing the things we did is we have to connect ourselves to large companies because what they can do, and I realized it when I was a corporate consultant, uh, they can't really start something. Um, they are good in uh, doing the things they do, but being innovative and doing new stuff, it's quite difficult for them. It costs them too uh, much energy, too much, uh, much money, and actually, in the surroundings I was, it was more talking about creating new stuff than really realizing it. So we thought, let's build new ventures with them together. And that was the starting point of Aim for the Moon and all the, the things we have been doing the, the last uh, four years. So if we look at this, and I've touched upon it a small time, we, we see two different worlds at Aim for the Moon. At one hand, the young entrepreneurs with some great skills, and on the other hand, some great companies, big companies, also with, with big resources, financial resources, but also, uh, uh, very great networks. On the other hand, both sides, both worlds have their negative points. Uh, they lack uh, some skills. So if you get them together, you can combine the best of both worlds and jointly we create our zero to one ventures. So in the past couple of years, we have uh, created an approach, the zero to one approach with four different stages. Um, in which we think we can create new companies more efficiently than if we do it alone of, or if uh, large companies do it uh, alone. And I'd like to show you some results of uh, the past uh, years. We are just 
even starting with creating impact and uh, we are really uh, having a lot of fun but it's still we need to learn a lot and we've already learned a lot by making a lot of mistakes so but some some results um, who've heard uh, who has heard of uh, Abbott Kinney's it's a cocoa yogurt now sold by uh, being sold by uh, also Albert Heijn they've created uh, a company that uh, sells uh, cocoa nut yogurt for people who are uh, lactose intolerant. I'm not sure if that's an English word, word. And they're doing pretty well. They actually, they're already bigger than the company of Aim for the Moon is. But also, together with uh, some brands, we have created new stuff. So, uh, Independer is a, is a company in the Netherlands who sell uh, and compare insurances online. And they asked us, okay, our business model is on the end of its uh, lifetime, so can you create something new? So uh, together with entrepreneurs and external uh, developers, we created a new platform for them to enter the, uh, the energy market. Another part in teamwork with uh, eBay. eBay is a company, well, you all know, it's a marketplace for products. They were looking around and everybody is seeing it as well. There's a lot of uh, going on around uh, marketplaces for services they asked us can you create something new for uh, uh, for this and in the end it ended up with uh, um, uh, how do you say it uh, entering the Dutch market with uh, the company voila and you see here also the the entrepreneurs that are uh, running it right now another thing is Together with uh, the Ministry of Economic Affairs, uh, Affairs and the Chamber of Commerce in the Netherlands, we created the new brand NL Groeit. NL Groeit is a platform that helps entrepreneurs scale faster and scale uh, more internationally. So these are some examples of what we have been doing. Um, well, this is a, a creative agency, also two entrepreneurs from Aim for the Moon doing great stuff. Uh, below, they have organized um, a tomato fight on uh, Dam Square uh, to help uh, the farmers uh, uh, during the Russian boycott. Uh, they have organized uh, uh, disco shopping, uh, uh, stuff like that. So we've, we've having, we are having fun doing cool stuff, but also doing serious stuff. But it's not only about uh, the ventures we have been we've been launching. It's it's more about the culture about Enfernoon that makes us uh, that we are having fun and that we are doing things and that we believe that we can have a real impact in in the coming future. Uh, and if I'm talking about future, it's not tomorrow, it's not next year. It might also be in five years or in ten years. The thing is, first get the right people on board and then decide on direction and create the ventures. But the thing that is really important for us is entrepreneurship and doing all in an entrepreneurial way. A small um, inspirational video of, uh, of what we do and what we believe. It starts with something small, a thought, a gut feeling, an urge to contribute to common ideals. You write something down, make some first drawings, you share your ideas. Anxiety and enthusiasm alternate constantly. Errors are everyday business in the life of an ambitious social entrepreneur. You feel the fear of not succeeding, but you don't let it get you. Baby steps become giant leaps, and before you even know it, the gap between your final goal and all your achievements is gone. You've contributed to a better world just like that first gut feeling told you to. There might be some sort of social entrepreneur in everyone. Only a few dare to let them free. Great minds not only think alike, but act on it as well. Great minds act together. They inspire like-minded people to do things that they didn't think they were capable of. That's why they share their stories with us, with you. Many hands make light work for tomorrow's better world. 
Now, let's start. Get inspired by those who have been there. Set free the social entrepreneur in you. So, with this moonshot, we, we are trying to connect entrepreneurs in the Netherlands, but eventually all over the world, that have the same dreams as we have. And actually, we're all working together on those those values we we have together. So one um, that the movie was also about is Dream Big, Start Small. And we really believe that in order to get real impact, we have to dare to dream big. And for us Dutch Dutch people, it's, it's quite difficult to dream big. Um, we have a small country, and we are really good at doing small things with barely nothing. But if you go to the US, the country is so big, for them it's so easy to dream big because they have a large market. So we really have to push ourselves in the Netherlands to dream bigger, to dream bigger, but not to think of giant leaps to get to the next point. No, we really have to make the things, the next things we have to do really small. And then it's quite easy because step by step, eventually we get there. So. That's the spirit we try to uh, to achieve with each other, and that's something we believe. And uh, so that's the first. The second, it's connected to the small steps, but it's all action oriented, and it's also uh, driven by a uh, by a frustration because the frustration of being in a in a sometimes a corporate and political environment where it's not about actions and doing stuff, it's about talking and arguing and uh, discussing about things. So we really believe in, okay, let's simply do it and prove it. And uh, uh, yeah, what's is there, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. And I, that's, that's what we do. And also in when we work together with, with large companies to uh, achieve results, it's also about, okay, let us show us the next step and then we talk uh, further. Well, together, um, I've already mentioned, first get the right people on board, then decide on uh, direction. It's all people-based, because the things we do is people-driven. It's not technology-driven. Of course, we use, make use of technology. Of course, we uh, try to scale with technology, but it all starts uh, with, uh, with people. And if you want to go fast, go alone. And if you want to go far, go together. Uh, that's something uh, we do, and that's why uh, we are a community of entrepreneurs and not just simply, uh, it's not a one-man show. Give to get, some others call it pay it forward, but I really believe uh, within the community of Aim for the Moon, it's really important that entrepreneurs help each other, because you've seen it in uh, the movie about the Startup Kids, the trailer. Um, Entrepreneurship is, uh, so one day it's, it's going very good, the other day it's very low. And we need to support each other, we need to help each other out when, uh, when those uh, things occur. So um, our community is based on that, that the entrepreneurs help each other out, not buying uh, via transactions or they pay each other or whatever. No, we just simply help each other. Something uh, we believe in our, our karma and our karma points. And to conclude, um, yeah, what you've seen, I guess, about the examples in what we have doing, we just simply like to have a good time. Um, we are called Aim for the Moon, like, okay, we want to reach the, the, the far high uh, goal, but it's all about the journey and having fun together and obviously keeping the end in mind, but really to, uh, to enjoy it and uh, see what comes uh, afterwards. So those are the five main values of Aim for the Moon that shapes our culture, and I truly believe that cultures uh, uh, eat strategy for lunch. It's not my quote, but it's a quote of Brian Chesky from Airbnb. But um, that's, uh, that's what holds us together. I'll skip this. And that's what I uh, wanted to share with you for now. So if you have some questions, and probably you do, then uh, Nick will guide us uh, through some questions. Thanks for that. What a journey. Wow. And the questions are ready to go. I'll, uh, I'll go out there and do the hard work for you. Uh, we're going to keep it simple. What's your name and what's your question? 
Oh, and he's got a speaker badge, so this is probably going to be a good question. Hi, Chris. Um, thank you for your inspiring talk. I like that you try to get people more interested in entrepreneurship. Um, but now my question, what is the business model of uh, Aim for the Moon? Because I don't want to blame you right now, but for me right now it seems more like another type of consultancy. So you just change the one prison against another prison. That's a good question. Uh, yeah, it's a good question. Actually, it's always the first question, so that's uh, I'm not surprised. But the business model of Aim for the Moon is, is, is quite simple. It's a, it's a service uh, business model. So what we do, we start with a scope uh, that is formed together with a company and with a team of entrepreneurs. And what we do as Aim for the Moon and what we are good at is making sure that they're getting from zero to one as quickly as possible. You've seen the steps. And the, the company is paying a service fee for Aim for the Moon to, uh, to guide them to get there as quickly as possible. And they're at one when they have a, a company that is uh, ready to scale and that can make money. So what makes us different than a consultant is that the entrepreneurs, they are not in there for just the period from zero to one. No, they have a long-term commitment and they actually get shares in the things they, re uh, they uh, create together with the companies. So it's not that we are changing big companies. No, we are starting new ventures and the entrepreneurs we work with, they actually grow with the companies and get shares and have uh, real risks like real entrepreneurs. So you're connecting corporates with entrepreneurs to get the scalability to the entrepreneurs. That's right. And so we support during the process to get something. Who is paying? Corporate or entrepreneurs? The corporate is paying. Ah, okay. Yeah. They have the money. Still got some work to get. Th it's a you and I know that business model. We know how it works, but it, it's so hard to just get it out cleanly, right? When yeah. you're explaining it. Without saying the words agency, consulting, because That's that right. takes it in the wrong direction. It's, 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 I really believe it's a new area. It's a new, it's a new, it's a new market. It's a new, a new way of thinking about creating stuff. And uh, it's a new paradigm. And it's, for me, it's always, it's difficult to explain, but yeah, I guess you have to experience. I think that's also because you're still figuring it out as you go. I mean, now you've got a pretty solid model, but as you said, you tried lots of stuff to get to this point. And you've right. not got to the end yet, right? That's it's right. So, so we have worked together with investors to get our scalability. We have worked together with experienced entrepreneurs to get our scalability. And we experienced that connecting big companies who have a need right now and startup teams is the great match. And that's our product market fit. And now we're, uh, we're doing pretty well. Now you're scaling for the moon. Now we're finally we're scaling. Cool. Another question. Yeah. Hi, my name is Ruben. Um, first of all, concerning the entrepreneurs, how do you recruit them and are there certain selection criteria involved? Yeah, so um, interesting with entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs don't want to be recruited. They want to select themselves, so we don't recruit. It's not like that we say, hi, we want new entrepreneurs and the entrepreneurs think, well, if they are looking for entrepreneurs, probably uh, they are looking for consultants or they are looking for employees. So that's the first thing, but obviously, we do uh, explore uh, with a lot of uh, entrepreneurs. Um, what we, where we find them is we are really connected within the, the startup ecosystems that are around in the Netherlands. Um, we come there, we go there, we talk to them. And if we think there's, there's a match, what we do is, okay, you can come with us and for a month, you're just, you are around, you work with us, you see whether you have a match with us, and we see whether you are a match with our core values and obviously also with the talents and stuff we, we, we are looking for. Um, and after a month, you won't get paid. Uh, also, if you're doing projects for corporates, it's just uh, a period of where, you, uh, where we get to know each other. If that's positive for the entire group, everybody is uh, saying, for, okay, this is something that we want uh, at our community and vice versa. We say, okay, now we are going to do uh, projects together and you can enter uh, startup teams. And uh, the real criteria for entrepreneurs, it's um, uh, 
basically it's you're not a specialist but you're a generalist uh, we do work together with a lot of specialists but they're in the community outside of the core of aim for the moon so you're a generalist you have a constant urge and a, and a, and a need to solve the problems you uh, uh, you face and you constantly come with a solution for that if you're not uh, if you do not have that uh, capacity or that even that uh, that passion uh, then you're not uh, really a part of our group and there are some more but those are the most uh, important all right perhaps another question from the audience somewhere Oh, that's a good thing with great storytellers, right? You, you put it out all on stage and then there's no room for questions. Thank Hi. you. We, we met earlier, right? Remind me, your name and your question. Uh, Nicole, my name is Nicole. And my question was, uh, how did you get businesses uh, trust your service in the beginning? Uh, that's a very good question. Uh, and that's very difficult. <laughs> that's a lot of talking. Um, it's also something that they... Uh, they simply believe that that you can fix it for them, and uh, they have to. How do you say it? They have to favor it. They have to gun at you in the beginning as well. But uh, at the beginning of my story, uh, I told that I worked at a, a consultancy firm. Um, they also supported us in making the step to entrepreneurship. So what they did is they supported their network uh, and uh, backed us in the beginning with some credibility to get it going. So that really helped us in uh, making the first steps. But it's still some st sometimes tough. We're, we're there for four years, and uh, uh, that's really young for a company. And, and we are talking to sometimes board-level people of, of those large companies, and we say, hey, guys, uh, how experienced are you, and what's your credibility? We should work with uh, InnoLeaps or uh, stuff like that. But Thanks. But... Um, but in the end, they see that what we do is different, and they believe, as we do, in entrepreneurship uh, as a driving force for innovation. And we, we fail some, and we win some, and we learn some, and the last part is, is the best, and we just keep on believing and keep on going. I think that's really, and thanks for the plug, by the way, but I think that's actually part of it. It's about building those human connections, right? And it's easy for us to talk about, and I don't remember which companies were there, but you know, huge, great big companies, but actually it's one person or two people at that company who are gonna make that decision. And that's what we found was the hardest thing, and I'm sure you have, is finding the right person who's gonna make the decision, because otherwise you have 400 pointless conversations, but then just building a relationship with them yeah. to the point where they're like, I think I can believe in you, I think I can trust in you, I think you guys know what you're talking about, and I don't know what you're talking about. That's also really important, right? Is getting them to understand that this is a whole new world. Yeah. And if they don't go for it, they're going to miss out on something. Yeah, and also dare to be vulnerable. Uh, try not to be someone you're not or something you're not. And if you don't know something or, if you, or you don't have so, uh, something, be honest. And people like that. And then they, uh, I, I believe they, they trust you and they, yeah. It helps. It helps us. And I would add to that, not over-promising. Don't tell them you can do everything. Because if you tell them you can do everything, the chances are you probably can't, and they'll know it immediately. Yeah. Uh, I think we've got time for one more question, if somebody dares. Yeah. Hi, my name is Luke. From zero to one, who copied who? Uh, we copied. Yeah. And, and, and for the rest of the crowd on the live stream, <laughs> if, if you're not aware of the reference, it's a book by Peter Thiel. Yeah. And he says that starting something from literally nothing, zero, and getting it to anything worthwhile is the hardest part. Yeah. And um, the important part is we always start from scratch. And people uh, ask us a lot about our business model. And what are you connecting startups to companies? Ne no, we are not connecting existing startups to companies. We start from zero, nothing, nada. So. We create it, we have a scope, and from there we create and we make up new concepts, we validate those concepts, we build those concepts, and we launch those concepts, and that's from zero to one. All right. That's it. If there's no more questions, it looks Thanks like you're going to get away five minutes early, so that's great. Um, I don't know if you're staying in Utrecht tonight, but I, I figure even if you are, you're probably in a hotel. As, uh, as the audience knows by now, no campus party experience is complete without sleeping in a tent. 
Wow. So we're going to give you your own campus party That's tent great. to take away. Maybe you're going to put it up in the office. I know you've got a great space now. So, ladies and gentlemen, a huge round of applause, please, for Nick Kazmak. Thank you.